So I'm Greg. Um, we're going to be talking about ORMs today. Um, I am a senior architect at Studio Now. You can find me on Twitter or GitHub. Um, all this code is up on GitHub. Slides are on. Uh, you can link to them from there. Um, so with that, let's get going. How many people have used an ORM? Uh, how many people have ever built one or looked at the code for one or uh, tried to? Awesome. <laughs> so for people who aren't familiar with an ORM, um, there's three words, so we're going to explain all of them. An uh, object is just what you think of in Python. It's a, a in-memory representation of some data. Relational refers to a relational database, um, like MySQL or Postgres or SQLite or SQL Server or Oracle, whatever. Um, and then a mapper is something that translates between the two. Um, this is historically a somewhat challenging problem. If anybody's ever read, there's a blog post, uh, ORMs are the Vietnam of computer science. Um, somewhat explains some of the difficulty in uh, building one. This is from the JetBrains developer survey at the end of 2018, so not hot off the presses. Um, how many people have used SQL Alchemy? How many people have used the Django ORM? How many people have used anything else on this list? Awesome. So. As you can see, there's a variety of ORMs. They're all trying to solve the same problem. They all do things slightly different ways. Um, this is intentionally small. This is some of the things an ORM might be responsible for. So we have creating a database, defining tables, creating tables, inserting data, foreign keys, indexes, uh, stored procedures, obviously getting data, uh, updating data, deleting data. Um, as you get more advanced, you have more like production grade uh, system, you'll need to do caching, transactions, support different database backends. Um, performance is important, um, error handling, logging, all of that's important. We only have 45 minutes and probably only about 40 minutes. So we're going to just handle a few things. Uh, creating a database, defining some tables and some fields in the, those tables. Uh, foreign keys, which add a wrinkle to everything. Um, then we're going to create some tables, insert some data, and maybe even retrieve some data just for SQLite. So let's get going. Um, live coding is probably one of the most dangerous things you can do in a talk, so why not? Um, <laughs> to help with that, though, I wrote, I developed something that I'm going to call test-driven live coding. So I have a bunch of test cases, and they're going to fail, and we're going to try to fix them. Um, but before we get into that, here's roughly from the readme what we expect the RRM to do. So we'll define, we'll import a bunch of classes. Um, create a database pointing to a SQLite file, um, define a couple tables, uh, create those tables in our database, um, create some objects of these uh, types and then save them to the database. We're going to be able to query for all of the uh, records of a particular type, um, fetch a specific one, um, create an object that references an existing object. So here, rather than um, if you're not familiar with the data, so a foreign key allows you to reference one table from an, uh, reference one table from another. Um, it's easy to do in, in objects because you just have a memory reference, but in a in a relational database you have strict table structures, so you can't like embed all the data in there. You can, but it's a bad idea. A uh, little bit of tangent there. Um, so creating an object that references another object while still storing that in a relational database table is a challenge. So we're going to get to that. Uh, we're going to save this object with the uh, foreign key and then also show that you can fetch an object and then dereference it uh, without having to manually, say, pull the ID out, get the object with the ID. So with that, um, let's look at our first test case. Uh, we're going to create a database. So here's the test case. Uh, basically, we're going to delete, clean up anything from the last test run that failed, um, create a database, and make sure that we have a connection to it. So let's run that. Uh, so the first error we have is cannot import name database. So start with class database. And like any good test driven development, that's all I need to get that part to pass. Yeah. All right. Now we need to actually do some work. Um, so we're going to. Start with this. Uh, we need to take an argument that is the path to the file. Uh, and 
we need to import SQLite 3, which is built into the Python standard library. Uh, I'm going to avoid PEP8 and not have a lot of extra lines so you can see all the code. Can everybody see this okay? Is the text big enough in the back? All right, yeah, perfect. Um, all right, so we were able to create our database, verify that we have a connection. Now we don't have any attribute tables. So in Python, um, there's a thing called a property. If you're not familiar with this, it allows you to run code when you access an attribute. Uh, so we're just gonna call this tables. And just to get our test passing, uh, we're going to return an empty list. First test passed. One down, 10 to go. We'll see if we get how many we get through. Uh, let's look at the second test now. Um, want to define our tables. Uh, so just like in the readme, here's the dev, we're gonna import um, some things, uh, define our two tables. Uh, one of the challenges in an ORM is you have different data types. Uh, so we want the name of an author to be a string. We want to record the author's lucky number because I needed an integer. Um, down for the post, we're gonna have a Boolean for whether it's published or not, and also a foreign key. Uh, so let's start running the second test. Okay, so we don't have these uh, three things defined, so that's pretty easy to fix. Uh, all right, so we got past uh, the import statement. Uh, now we're, um, trying to create a, a uh, column object. And it's saying that the column object takes no parameters, so we need to create a constructor for this. Uh, uh, so after that, uh, everything worked up through the foreign key. So for foreign key, we need to record what it is a foreign key to. So this should be another table um, if you ever worked with an ORM, sometimes you have to lazily instantiate it by using a string to deal with circular uh, database relationships. Our ORM is not going to handle that. So we, we had to define the uh, author table first, and then we will uh, define another table that is a reference to that. Uh, Self.table is table. Okay, so like I was saying, uh, one of the problems in an ORM is you have to map in memory representation to the relational representation. And uh, in Python, you have strings and integers and floats and Booleans and a lot of uh, primitive data types. Um, a database has many of the same ones, but they're slightly different, not all the same, um, not always called the same thing. Uh, so we wanna make sure that we know for any particular column with a Python type, what the corresponding SQL type is. And so for this, rather than typing, I'm just gonna cheat and grab a bunch of stuff and put it in here. And so, like I was saying, a Python int, we wanna to map to the integer SQL, or the, in, the integer type in SQLite. For floats, there's a real data type. Uh, for string, we're gonna use text. For bytes, we'll use a blob. And for a Boolean, we'll use an integer because there is no Boolean type in SQLite. Uh, so now, with any luck, this test will pass. Column has no attribute SQL type, oh because we defined that mapping, but we did not actually set it as a property. Uh, <coughs> uh, and because we're short on time and short on screen space, I'm not gonna do any error handling. I'm just gonna assume that the thing you passed in is one of the types we know about. Two tests passing. <laughs> All right, <laughs> making progress. Uh, about, okay, checking my time here. Uh, so th for the third test, uh, we actually want to create these tables in the database. Um, if you ever, like, if you, whether you have or haven't used an ORM, how many people have written SQL before? How, and obviously, know there's trade-offs between an ORM and writing raw SQL, but in order to write an ORM, you have to write SQL. Uh, so we're gonna create these two tables uh, for run test three, uh, there is no um, attribute create. Uh, so we can go into our, our, our into our database class and define a function. 
Um, in order to do this, uh, I'm just going to create a quick helper function. Execute. Uh, so this is going to be our main entry point for running any SQL commands against our database connection. So we can just do self.con.execute SQL. Um, and for things like creating a table, we don't care about the return value, but I promise in the future we're going to want to return things, so we're just going to return the result of this. Uh, so then when we create a table, um, we can just run So I just made this up. This is a function that is um, a table has to know how to create the SQL to create itself. Uh, so again, I'm going to grab a statement here I have here. Um, so this is a regular standard uh, SQL statement, create table, the name of the table, and then the list of the field definition or the fields with their types. Um, and so we need to be able to translate the representation we have of a Python class with attributes into a name and a list of fields. So with that, um, perfect. We're trying to uh, call this get create SQL function um, on the table. Uh, one of the tricky things in designing an ORM is that you want um, to have a table class, but then you want to have subclasses that are the individual tables. But sometimes you need to call fu or call functions on the class itself, not on instances of the class. So Python has a way of doing this. It's called a class method. Um, and this is going to be called get create sequel. Uh, that is not what I meant to do. And so a normal Python function uh, or Python method will take self as the first argument. For class methods, the convention is to call that argument CLS. Um, and then we're just going to return create table sequel dot format because if you noticed, it's a a string with these curly braces in it, which in Python lets you um, substitute values in. And right now we're not substituting any values in, so when we run this, it's going to raise an error. There's no name that we've defined. Uh, so to do that, we're going to real quickly make another class method called get name. And there's lots of thought on how to translate a Python class name into a table. Um, I'm just doing something simple, which is lowercasing it. Um, so in Python, any class has an attribute called double under name. And then, like I said, we're just going to lowercase it. There's no reason we have to do this. You could have uh, uh, tables in a database that have capital letters. And in most cases, it's case insensitive. But uh, conventions generally, at least that I've seen, is for lowercase table names. So name is going to be uh, class dot get name. And then the other thing that we're going to need is fields. Um, because this is, I'm just going to steal some, uh, <coughs> steal some code here. Um, so one thing I didn't mention yet is that uh, every table generally has a primary key. And that is to say you can uniquely identify a record in the, in the database. Um, some ORMs require you to explicitly declare the primary key. We're not. We're just going to always assume that for any table, there's an integer primary key that automatically increases for everyone you put in the database. So by default, um, we're going to have a um, ID field that's an integer primary key. Um, how many people have seen inspect in Python? So inspect is a really cool module uh, we're going to import. And it lets you loop through or otherwise inspect various Python objects. And so in this case, we're saying give me all of the members, which is all of the functions, attributes, anything of, um, uh, any, anything that is a member of this class. And we're going to look for any of the fields or foreign keys that are defined on that class. And so if it's a column, we want to, um, uh, what am I trying to say? Uh, we want, want to have specify the name of the field and its SQL type so that we can put it into that SQL statement. Um, for a foreign key, like I said, we can't actually put the entire object into the table, so we're going to create a, 
uh, field, which is the name of the field, so in this case it's the author of a post, followed by underscore ID, and we're always going to use an integer uh, for the foreign key because all of our IDs are integers. Um, again, this is a simplification we're making. Uh, databases let you do things that are a lot more complex, but we don't have time for that. Um, and so now that we have this, uh, if you look at the test, um, you notice that the name of the field and its type just have a space between them, and then there's a comma between each, uh, each of the fields. And so in Python, there's a super convenient way to do this um, called join. So if you have any list, um, and in our case, we have nested, we have a tuple inside a list. So this is, uh, we're just going to take a space and put it between uh, the name and the data type. And then we're going to do this for each of the fields that we have. And then for our actual SQL, we're going to join them together with a comma. any luck, uh, this test is going to pass, or at least get a lot farther. Uh, except I have a syntax error. Uh, I need to close that. All right. So we were able to create these two tables in the database. Uh, the SQL that our ORM generated is what um, it should, because I know because I wrote this test ahead of time. Um, now we're looking again at this uh, DB tables attribute. And so we want to be able to query the database for all of the tables that are defined in it. Um, and so the way we're going to do that is there's a, so this is the syntax for uh, SQLite. Uh, like I was saying, we're only supporting SQLite for MySQL or, or Oracle. It would be a little bit different. Um, but there's another SQL command you can run. Basically, this is like a metadata table in SQLite. Uh, so you're looking for all of the tables that are defined. Um, so instead of just returning this empty list, uh, we're going to going to execute uh, select table SQL. And this is going to get a little bit farther, uh, but it's still going to fail because we are returning a cursor. And what we want to do is, um, oh, I know. Uh, we need to actually fetch the results from running this query. And so if you notice this, we're looking, we're expecting the list to have both of these things in it. Um, the way that uh, the, C the SQLite API returns results is a list of rows. And so to pull out the names, we just need to do a little bit of a list comprehension here. Um, there we go. Third, test, third pass passing test. Only about halfway through the time. <laughs> okay. Uh, so the fourth test is going to be creating Uh, the fourth test is going to be uh, creating instances of these classes. One of the tricky things in our ORM is that we don't have any idea what the attributes are going to be called. So we can't, um, we can't hard code these names. So in order to do that, uh, I'm going to steal another snippet because uh, I want to make sure we get as far as we can. Um, So the way that, um, so, so far all of the functions in the table class have been class methods because there are things we called on the table itself. The table's name, how to create the table. Here we're finally wanting to create an instance of this table or an instance of an object that we're going to put into this table. Um, uh, so this. Oh, you yeah, for whatever reason, copying, I'm al it's always losing the last character and I'm not sure why, but thank you for pointing that out. <laughs> Um, so like I said, every um, object we create is going to have an integer primary key called ID. Um, but before we actually insert it, we don't know what that ID is going to be. So we're going to store an internal private attribute called data to store all the values of the fields on this table. We can't do self.name, self.lucky number because we don't know what those are going to be in the context of the ORM code. Um, but what we can do is create a dictionary and then put all of the keyword arguments into values in the dictionary. Again, we're not doing any error checking, so you could put whatever data you want in here. It's not going to get saved, but it it's not, doesn't do as much error checking. Um, so we do this. Um, and so we were able to create the object. It took the keyword arguments and put it in a dictionary. Um, but 
when you are looking at an object and you access this name property, it actually, that name is already defined on the class and it's the actual column object. It's not the value of that column in that object. So we're gonna do another tricky Python thing. Um, I really should have titled this talk Tricky Python Things because there's just a lot of things, uh, cool uh, little features in Python that let you do this uh, in a somewhat elegant way. Uh, so there's a magic method in Python called get attribute, which is used when you look up an attribute on an object. Property is one way that it hooks into that, um, but there's a lot lower level, and this is one example. Um, so this is basically a function that gets called on an, an instance of an object or an instance of a class, and it gets passed the name of the attribute you're looking for as a key. Um, I'm gonna steal this because it'll be easier to do that than to type out, and I can explain it. Um, the problem is that if you try to do this for every attribute, you're gonna break all of the Python, or sorry, all of the regular um, Python machinery. Uh, so if you try to do something like this, uh, data equals self dot data, um, and then just get the key. So if we try to short circuit what I had already written and try to return this, uh, does anybody know what's gonna happen? Uh, something called recursion. <laughs> um, so when you try to get this data up, or when you try to get this dictionary that we defined, it's calling this function itself and it never actually gets it. Or it's never able to actually resolve it to an actual instance of an object. Uh, so we call it on the base object class and we can call get attribute um, and pull the data out uh, we check if it's a thing that we know about, if it's one of the columns that we've defined in our fields table, and if not, we, f again, fall back to the default Python implementation. Uh, so this will let us actually um, get the attributes off of the objects that we've created. Um, so like I, like I was saying, just to reinforce this, um, the table has an attribute called name, it's the column. The instance of the object, we actually wanna return the value for that object. Um, I was gonna say this up front and I completely forgot. Um, the main takeaway from this talk should be, hopefully, that writing an ORM is complex, but it's not magic. It is just Python code using built-in features of Python language um, to do some pretty cool things that make an easy, user-friendly abstraction on top of something that's pretty complex. So, with that, we have four tests passing and we'll move on to test five. Um, so we wanna save, now that we've created an object, uh, we wanna save it. Uh, because what uses a database if you can't actually write any things into it? Um, so we're gonna run, if we run test five, it's gonna fail because we don't have a save thing defined, or save method defined. Uh, in our database, we're going to uh, uh, so we've defined this function, so that will pass. Um, Well, that's interesting. <laughs> um, so it was looking up the uh, get attribute SQL, but it's actually using our internal um, get attribute code to do this. Um, why is it doing this? I'm not actually sure. Um, but what we need to do is uh, grab this insert SQL command. See, I did it again. It's not grabbing the last one. Um, so this is our insert SQL, and we're going to um, So here we have the author object has no attribute get insert SQL. Um, so in this case, we actually have an instance of the object. So we're not gonna use a class method like we did for the other, fu the other SQL functions. We're actually going to um, define a uh, get insert SQL function on an instance of this class. And we're gonna return uh, Return the SQL. Um, 
Cool. So we have the SQL statement. Uh, if we go and look at it, uh, we need the name of the table again. Uh, we need a list of all the fields that we're going to set on that table and also uh, values that we're going to put in to the table. Um, so we, here we can just say name is, uh, in this case, because this is an instance method, we can't use class.getName, but you can use uh, double under class to get the class of any particular Pyth or object in Python. And we're going to do the same thing, get name. Um, we could also use the double under name and lower here, but since we already have that defined, we'll use this. Um, and then for now, I'm just going to put fields is an empty list, uh, placeholders is an empty list, just because I know the formatting is going to fail if I don't do that. Um, so here we see where um, these things are substituted into our query. Um, and I'm going to go steal some more code because, we're, again, I want to make sure we get as much as we can. Um, so again, uh, we're going to use inspect to um, we're going to use inspect to loop over all of the. Um, uh, columns and, and foreign keys that we defined in this class. Um, and for any of the columns that are defined in this class, we're going to um, add fields. So we need to say, say what fields we're putting in the database. We need to have a list of the values that we want to put in. Um, but who's ever heard of SQL injection? So one of the ways, of, if you haven't heard of SQL injection, it's basically a way of a malicious user can set data, and because of the nuances of the SQL language, it will treat data as a command. And so we don't want users to be able to run commands on our database. Um, so a way of doing this is parameterizing queries, and you put a placeholder, and you clearly say to, the, to SQLite, this is the command, and here's the data. And it won't, um, it's written so that it won't um, ever in, or put it in the wrong way. Sorry, that was not a great explanation. But, so we have a list of fields, we have a list of placeholders, and a list of values. Um, so placeholders, we're just going to put um, a bunch of question marks in. That's kind of the, um, that's the symbol that the SQLite engine uses for um, where it's going to substitute values in. Um, so we just need a list of question marks for each field that we're putting in. And then the fields is, um, again, Um, fields. And with this, this should work. Incorrect. Oh, okay, yeah. So we're returning the SQL statement, which is, like I said, the first argument that we pass to the execute. Uh, we also need to return the values. Um, and so up in our uh, database class, um, I'm actually going to steal this out. Uh, Um, you can actually pass a SQL command and a set of data to the SQLite execute function. Um, and in order to handle that, because we have some commands that just take SQL and some that take SQL and arguments, um, I'm just going to put this params in here. It's, it's going to have a default value of none, and if we define it, um, we're going to call execute with SQL and the parameters. And Otherwise, we'll just return, uh, execute this, the raw SQL as we have been doing before. With that, okay. So we were able to ensure that our ORM is creating the right SQL and passing the right arguments to the database engine. I said before, we want to make sure that every row has an ID, and that ID should be unique, and we're going to let the database calculate it for us. So we can't do that in Python. We need to rely on the database telling us what, um, what ID was given to that, I, that row when it was inserted in, in the database. Um, and the way that we do that is uh, when, you, when you execute an insert statement, you, you, what you get back is a cursor, and then the cursor has an attribute um, uh, last row ID. And so we can use that to set uh, the ID of the 
uh, instance that we're saving to the database. There we go, another test that passed, halfway there. Um, test six already passes. Um, <laughs> if we go look at test six, uh, it's really just adding in some more data. Um, apologies to any Blue Jackets fans, but I just moved from Nashville, and uh, so these are all Predators players. Um, so we're gonna save some more uh, authors into our database. Uh, now we need to query the, um, uh, we're gonna define this all function that will query the database and pull out all of the objects of a certain class. Um, again, we're gonna skip a bunch of steps because I want to get as far as we can. Um, we have another SQL command that does select all. Um, you'll notice that there's a pattern to this. So for every database operation, there's a template SQL uh, um, string and then ways that we determine based on the definition of the table and the definition of the particular instance, the fields on that particular instance, how we format that into a string that we pass to the database engine. Uh, so for the select all SQL, we just want a list of the fields and we want um, the name of the table. So again, I'm just gonna cheat a bunch and put some of this code in here. Um, so in this case, uh, if you noticed in the call, we actually passed the name of the table. Um, so in this case, the get select all SQL is a function that we're gonna call on the table class itself. Um, I'm gonna just grab that too. Um, so when a So we know that we always want to get the ID. Um, like I said, we're, we're making an assumption that every table has an ID. Uh, and then for the rest of the fields in the database, um, we want to um, append that this is another field that we want to get from the database. Um, thank you. Um, so like I was saying, this is a thing we call on the table itself, so it needs to be a class method, thank you. Um, and we also need to return the fields because once we, I think I mentioned before, when you execute a select statement, you get a list of rows without knowing the names of the columns. Um, there are ways around that, but uh, for purposes of this, uh, we're gonna assume that we need the fields. Um, and so we return the SQL and the list of fields that we want. When we execute, we're only gonna pass the SQL because we're, it's select these fields from this table. Um, but in order to, if you remember when we defined the constructor for our table instances, it's a bunch of keyword arguments. Um, and so this is another bit of like weird Python syntax that's actually really powerful. Um, fields will be a list of the field names, and then as we loop through each row, row is a list of values for those fields. We've kept them in order so that we can just zip them together, which creates a list of pairs, name and value. The dict function in Python can take a list of those key value pairs and create a dictionary out of them. And then you can use this star star um, operator to unpack that into keyword arguments that get passed to our uh, constructor. It's a bunch of magic um, if you've never used it before, but it's really powerful and it lets you write really compact code. Um, so in this case, table is a class, so we can inst instantiate a class um, using these keyword arguments and append this to a result set that we return. And with that, our test seven should come pretty close to passing, and in fact, it passes, awesome. Got a few minutes left, um, so I'm going to um, keep going. Uh, test eight um, is going to be getting a object with a specific ID. So this is the first case of a where clause. So we're able to get all the objects. Now we want to be able to get a specific object. Um, where clauses are more complex, they let you do comparisons greater than, less than, can return more than one. Um, we're just gonna focus right now on getting a single object by ID. Um, in order to do that, uh, again, we're gonna grab a select where, a hard-coded SQL string. Um, and select where is going to be very similar. Um, Uh, 
uh, okay, so so we're when we run this, uh, we need to define a get operator for, for ORM on the database class. It's going to take the name of the class you want and the ID. Um, so we can define that pretty quickly. Um, it's a lot quicker to copy and paste than actually write code. Um, and again, so this is going to take the table object itself and the ID. Um, going to, again, build a SQL string. And in this case, we need both the fields that we're getting because we need to use that to populate the entire object. And we need to combine that with the placeholders approach that we used before to avoid SQL injection. So we're kind of building up layers here. But it's a, a set of common patterns. Um, like I said, the list of fields um, and the parameters to avoid SQL injection. Um, instead of using fetch all, we're going to use fetch one, which will get a single object. Um, in this case, that's okay because we know that the ID should be unique. Um, if you're doing a more complex where you would want to iterate over all the rows and um, uh, return multiple ones, kind of like we did with select all. Same pattern, we're going to zip up the list of fields and the row into a dictionary and then return a table that was created from those parameters. Uh, the only thing we still need to do is this get select where SQL. Um, and this is going to follow a very similar pattern that we've seen. Um, method um, and so here it takes a variable number of arguments because we eventually want to be able to support multiple values um, multiple multiple things you're filtering by but in this case we're just going to hard code if you noticed up here we're just hard actually let me close some of these um, uh, we're just hard coding ID equals ID but it could potentially take different arguments that you um, uh, pass in um, because there might be more than one filter. So for each filter, uh, I can look at the test, and we want this um, clause to look like where the name of the variable equals a parameter. And again, we're going to pass in the parameter to avoid SQL injection. If there's multiple of these, we join them together with and. So ID is this, and something, and something. Um, or like a robust ORM allows you to do or queries and nested Boolean logic and stuff way more complex than we have time for. Um, but uh, let's see how close we are to passing this test. Uh, all right, it passes. Um, running low on time, so I'm just to wrap it up right there. Um, all of the code, including the three more tests, uh, are in the code on GitHub. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to reach out or talk to me in the halls or whatever. Um, real quick, I just want to show you what the tests do. Um, uh, oh, so the, we, the the fun part is actually converting an object to get its ID and then putting it in um, into the ID field. And then later, actually, when you pull out a row that has an ID column, knowing to go in and look up that object by itself so that you can dereference uh, author from the post. Um, things that we didn't get to, joins, um, lots, I mean, all kinds of fun stuff beyond that. But I'm hoping this was a useful kind of like demonstration of the fact that it's not magic. It's uses some common patterns, and you can do it. Don't ever use an ORM that you write, though. <laughs> <laughs> um, people put a lot of time into uh, making them robust, and SQL Alchemy and Django and all. I, those are the two I have experience with. I'm sure the other ones are also very good. Um, but go forth and uh, write databases, <laughs> or use databases. Thank you. Thank you.